in service, Perry Temple Poultry for our monthly district union meeting at 4 o'clock p.m. All are welcome to attend. See Elder Genero for details. Monday through Tuesday, family policy time. Wednesday, Bible study commences at 7 p.m. Subject, the Sermon on the Mount, Come and Enjoy the Word of the Lord. Amen. Thursday through Saturday, family policy time. Sunday, join us again here. It will be rally day. Come and be blessed. Special announcements. Our family and friends day has been scheduled June 9th, 12 o'clock noon. Invite someone. Their presence will make a difference. Amen. Our new membership class will begin first Sunday in June. District revival at Greater Good Shepherd, May 31st. Let's come and be revived. Thought of the week. And he spake a parable to his to this end, men ought to always to pray and not faint. Yes. Luke chapter 18, verse 1. Amen. Let's honor that special prayer list. Pastor O'Neill, Darnell Hammond, Mel Hammond, Sister Johnson, Jean Johnson, Mother Leslie Dasher, Deacon Homer Kelly, Gail Frazier, Mother Edna Parker, De'Ara Brown, the current bereaved, Miss Barbara Foster, Miss Michelle Tate. Let us also remember all others known whose name may not appear on this list. Our weekly scheduled worship service are as follows. Every Sunday, Sunday school at 10 a.m. General worship at 12 noon. Sunday night, coming soon. Most Wednesday nights, Bible study. Thursday nights, open session. First Friday nights, evangelistical service and shut-in. We wish to say welcome to each visitor, if there be any, and do trust that you will be blessed at this service. This congregation joins our pastor in saying, you're welcome at all times, and hopefully you'll find reasons to come again and again. Amen. Also, um, we have a corrected date for our Pentecostal consecration. Little Falk corrected date, this is Pentecost consecration. May 31st through June 9th. Special consecration, more details to come. Bless you on Mother's Day. The faithful will abound with blessings. Proverbs 28, verses 20. Just a little reminder that you are loved, appreciated, and valued in a special way today. Minister Walter and Sister Howe. Amen. Little Flock, a blessing for you. May your Mother's Day be as joyful as the joy you bring, as loving as the love you give, as blessed as the blessing you are. God bless you today. Elder Justice
we have our Italian pan on the left, and we have our orphan pan on the right. And once again, Saints, we have our Italian pan on the left, and we have our orphan pan on the right.
park. He was parking all on the street. Amen. Amen. We thank the Lord for him coming out of his busy schedule and being with us here today. Amen. At this time, at this time, we're getting ready to present to you none other than the pastor, Willie Haynes. And we lift that right hand and say, God bless. God bless. God bless. God bless. God bless. Come on, somebody give the Lord a hand praise this yes. morning. Yes. jurisdiction, amen, I praise and thank God, amen, for the legacy of this church, amen, amen, if you have the Bibles this morning, amen, I want you to turn, amen, to the book of Psalm, the 116th Psalm, and the 12th verse, and when you have it, say amen, don't say hold on, I'm going to hold, I'm going to drink this one, they got over here, <laughs> Clear my throat. Psalm 116 and 12. If you have it, stand for the reading of God's holy word. Hallelujah. And the word of the Lord reads one verse of scripture. The Bible says, What shall I render unto the Lord? For all of his benefits 
toward me. Let me read that one more time. What shall I render unto the Lord? For all of his benefits toward me. Yeah. If you will allow me to use my subject this morning, Little Flock Church of God in Christ. I would want to use my subject this morning, Elder Janeiro. He owes me nothing. Come on now. But I owe him everything. Right. Would you look at your neighbor this morning and say, neighbor? Neighbor. God owes me nothing. God owes me nothing. But I owe him everything.
1 Thessalonians 5 and 18. Yeah. The Bible says in everything, give thanks. Yeah. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Yeah. You see, Mother Geneva, I am convinced yes. my yes. God. Yes. I'm convinced in the season and hour of the church, my God, yeah. that people are not, my God, they are not confident yes. in the word of God. Yes. But I came to tell somebody that the Bible says that the grass will wither and the flower shall fade. But the word of God, it shall stand. I don't care what you're going through. You better lean and depend on the word. You better lean and depend on Jesus. The Bible said in John 1 and 1, that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And everything that was made by God, you better understand something. When you are going through the vicissitudes of life, you better lean and depend on Jesus. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Well, we want to lean and depend on our own understanding. Uh, uh, we want to lean and depend on the counsel. Uh, we want to lean and depend, my God, on the doctor. Uh, but I heard one of the prophets say, whose report uh, shall I believe? Uh, I came to tell somebody that I want to believe. Uh, the yeah. of God. Yeah. This is significant because of the psalmist uh, it is also praising God uh, from delivering him from death. Uh, uh, in return, the psalm pledges uh, his faithfulness to God uh, because he had heard his voice uh, and his supplication. Uh, brothers and sisters, in our text this morning, the psalmist uh, is at a pivotal moment in his life. Uh, uh, he takes praise to another level. Yes. Not only does he want to praise God, but he desires, watch this, to be a worshiper. I came to tell somebody there is a difference between praise and worship. You see, in praise, my God, everybody can praise him. But the Bible says, but everything praise the Lord. But I remember, I remember, my God, Jesus ran into a woman, my God, at the well. And the Bible said, my God, the Bible said that Jesus told her, and I just cut through the field, the Bible said that Jesus told her, you don't know who you worship, you don't know what you worship, but there's going to come a time, my God, when you won't be, you won't be able to go up to the mountain and worship, because God is looking, my God, he is searching throughout the earth, he is searching throughout the earth, where True worshiper. Yeah. The Bible said that Jesus told him. He said, Oh my God. He said, True worshipers, worship me in spirit and in truth. Can I tell somebody in here anything outside of worship? Anything outside of the spirit? Anything outside of truth? It is useless to God. So you can praise what you're not all day long. But if your heart Oh, man. 
He said, what shall I render unto the Lord? For all of his benefits toward me. What does the psalmist say? He said, God, what can I return to you? What can I offer you? How can I repay you? What can I present to you? He said, what can I give you? For you have heard me. He said, you allow death to compass me. He said, you held hold of me. He said, I found trouble. Look what he's saying. If you go back, my God, from the verse number one to verse number 11, the psalmist, he talks about all of the things that God has done for him. And the psalmist said that he found trouble. Oh, yeah, trouble didn't find him, but he found trouble. Many of us can testify with the writer that trouble just didn't find us, but we found trouble. He said, I was brought low. He said, but you delivered my soul. He said, you caused the tears, my God, to be held back. He said, you caused me to get up. He said, I was greatly afflicted, but you avenged me. Understand, people of God, on the onset of things, there is nothing, my God, hear me. There is nothing we can really give God, being that what God, what God has already given us, my God, it will never be of equal value. For yeah. uh, God has been giving my God uh, since the beginning of time. For yeah. well, the Bible says in John 3 and 16, uh, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, uh, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, uh, but have everlasting life. Here he is. Uh, in Revelation 13, he says, uh, from the foundations of the world, uh, uh, the Lamb was already slain. Uh, God has already been and nothing in our lifetime that we give back to him will never be of equal value for what God has already given us. Watch this, but it does not mean we are not to give him something. So this could this be the reason why the Bible says in Joel, the second chapter 12 and 13, the Bible says return unto the Lord with all your heart. Your arms with fasting and a weeping. Arms are with mourning. He said, when here, offer your hearts and not your garments and return unto the Lord. You see in this text, garments, they represent our appearance. And so essence, he denounces any form of godliness because we have a form of godliness, but we are denying the power thereof. We dress up like the church folks. Yeah. We talk like the church folks. Yeah. We dance like the church folks. Yeah. We clap our hands like the church folks. Yeah. But you are denying the power thereof. Yeah. And that power that he's talking about is the power to change. Yeah. The ability, my God, for the Holy Ghost to come on the inside of you and pick you up and turn you around. Yeah. The Bible says if any man be in Christ, yeah. Yeah. 